2006, O'Fallon, Missouri. 13-year-old Megan Meyer thought she found a wonderful boy on MySpace. Little did she know this was the worst thing that would ever happen to her and her parents. This is a story of Megan Meyer. Hello, good morning. Oh, it is Saturday, November 25th. One more month and it is Christmas. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and Black Friday. I, of course, had to work both days. Mm. So I didn't get to go anywhere or do anything except work. But I'm not a big Black Friday person anyway. I do all my stuff online now. So, uh, and really there wasn't much that was, I didn't think really much of a sale myself. But anyway, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I am so glad to be back doing a, uh, an episode. It's been, um, it's been a struggle this week. Um, toxic people, toxic uh, environments. And so Thanksgiving brought me up. My husband's a wonderful cook, <laughs> so um, he took care of me on Thanksgiving, and and hit me and his father, and um, he takes care of all of us, so I am drinking today. Now, today, I just ordered the 12 days of, Christmas, of coffees. Java Mama puts this out every year, and what it is, is you drink, one, or you, when you open one, it just has the number and a QR code that you scan does not tell you what kind of coffee it is it's a mystery coffee so when you scan that um, QR code it'll tell you what it is and today I did the first coffee of day one and I was totally wrong I, I I'm like man this is strong and I couldn't place it and I'm like kind of just like it's got some spicy flavor you know and I'm sitting there talking about it and it's a coffee I already have and I just had it like a week ago I was totally off. It is our candy cane coffee is number one. And like I said, even now when I try it, even after I knew what it was, it tastes like it's it, it it's got like a stronger taste. And it could have been maybe I put more coffee uh, grounds in the coffee pot than I did the first time I had it a week ago. <laughs> mm. It is very good. Or maybe I didn't put enough of coffee in it and I got more peppermint flavor the first time. But after you drink it, you still have that flavor in your mouth. So you still have the peppermint um, flavor. And that's really what should have um, gave it away to me. And it didn't. I wasn't paying attention as much to the aftertaste. I just kept trying to figure out what it was. I think I was trying too hard. Mm. But it is a bold taste. Very good peppermint flavor. Java Mama's Air Roasted, and I will leave the link in the show notes. Okay, this case today is very important to me. This is the type of case, and I'm probably going to do my next one. I have another uh, episode I'm planning with two different cases together like I did. I did that one other time for the realtors, and this one was, um, this is going to be probably something like that where... I'm going to explain this. This is a problem. It's been a problem for, actually, this problem's been a problem forever, but it's gotten worse since the internet came up. And I'm talking about bullying. And I wanted to cover it. I don't think this is, I mean, this is really hitting me really hard this week for myself. And this story's always just, it just broke my heart. And when you find out how it ended, I mean... I was in shock when I first heard this. So we're going to talk about, now this is episode 71 and we're going to talk about Megan Meyer. Um, I got my sources from the Megan Meyer foundation.org and that is online that you can go to and visit. Now her last name is Meyer, M-E-I-E-R. And uh, my other source is wikipedia.org. 
Um, there's also a lot of news. If you Google this, uh, a lot of different podcasts, or I mean, a lot of different websites, uh, news websites have have inf- information on this. Um, Megan Meyer was born on November 6th, 1992. She was born in O'Fallon, Missouri, to Tina and Ronald Meyer. She loved to swim and fish. Also, boating and dogs. Oh, so sweet. I love dogs. I grew up with dogs. Oh, they're just, I love them. Um, Now, she had a weight issue growing up, and um, she had ADD, and she also fell into depression. So, um, now, she thought of suicide in third grade. Third grade. I mean, when I was in third grade, I think I was eight or nine, and I can imagine thinking that at that age. So I'm wondering if she was bullied at that age. That's very, very young. Um, Now, they did get her in to see a therapist, which was good, but she was prescribed an antidepressant. It's called Citalopram, if that's how I'm saying it, C-I-T-A-L-O. P-R-A-M. And this is a side, it has a side effect of increasing suicide risk in young people. I don't understand why they would have given her this. I mean, I don't know. Increasing suicide risk. I read that in, in young people and I'm like, she's not, she's only 13. Well, no, this time she's in third grade. Look how young she is. Um, but she was also on two others. She was on methyl Phenidate, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Phenidate, menthol, M E T H Y L, P H E N I D A T E, and an antipsychotic ziprosidone. That's Z I P R A S I D O N E. I've not heard of these two. I've not heard of any of these. Um, I'm not, I mean, I know some of the common antidepressants, but I've never heard of these. Now, she went to Fort Zumwalt. West Middle School. I hope I'm saying that right. And uh, she came to know some of the popular girls and started hanging around them because she thought that the the mean boys that she was coming across would stop messing with her, teasing her, making fun of her. Believe me, huh? Boys, boys are what my problem was also. They were totally wor- worse than the girls and for me. And then, but for her case, it backfired. This backfired and then the girls turned mean to her and started and then the bullying got worse. I don't know if they found out she was just trying to hang with them because of that. I don't know. Um, Her parents then put her in. They changed her school, which is very good. Um, That's wonderful. The parents will do this. Uh, Immaculate Conception Catholic School. And it was in another town. I forgot what town. I didn't write it down, but it wasn't far from O'Fallon. Now things were getting better. And she joined the volleyball team and opened a MySpace account under her mom's guidance. So her mom um, had to log in. Like she was able to open her own MySpace, but her mom knew the password. She did not know the password. So her mom was there and this is wonderful and, and it would be great if... A lot of parents did this for kids who were very young because then you can, you know, when they're on and, you know, but, uh, so she was not able to log on herself. Um, but when she got the MySpace account, she found a 16 year old boy named Josh Evans who started, um, messaging her and he was interested, interest in her, if I can talk, interested in her and told her how pretty she was. So she begged her mom, begged her to let her be online friends with him. You know, when you request a friend and they have to approve it and you have to approve that. And I remember MySpace was like that, you know, like Facebook. And she begged her, let her, let her communicate with him, be friends with him. And then, um, but Tina said she would watch the communication and it made Megan so happy to have a boy who liked her. Now, Josh Evans was homeschooled and he had no phone number. Um, he lived in nearby O'Fallon. And um, I don't. I thought that he sent a picture to her, but I didn't get in my sources if he did. But I saw, I read where she thought he was attractive. 
So I'm thinking that she saw a photo of him. It could have been his profile pic. Now, I think we had profile pics on MySpace, if I can remember. Yeah, we did. Okay, a strange message came through to Megan on October 15th of 2006. And it said, this is what the message said. I don't know if I want to be friends anymore because I've heard that you are not very nice to your friends. Well, Megan was beside herself. She didn't know who was he talking to, who's telling him this stuff. So she asked him what he was talking about. And there was no response that I read. So then when I was reading my sources, so then the next day, Megan invited other kids at school to her birthday party by handing out invites. And then um, when she got home, she wanted her mom to log on to MySpace so she could see if Josh ever responded from the night before. And um, Tina had to leave. She had to take Megan's younger sister to a doctor appointment. So she, she knew Megan was upset. And she told her to log off. She was pressed for time. She had to go. And um, Megan told her she was just about ready to finish up. And then she will log off. Well, now, uh, Tina, that's Megan's mom, called her once she got to the doctor's and asked her if she finished up and logged off of MySpace. Well, Megan said no. At least she's telling the truth, you know, but she said no. And that they were being so mean to her. Tina told her to sign off now. She was getting upset because Megan was not doing what she told her to do. And she said she wants her to sign off right that minute. Okay. Well, after the phone call, 15 minutes later, Megan called her mom crying. She said they were posting bulletins now on MySpace, there was a little section where there was a bulletin. And I remember being where, being this, where it would be like announcements, like, um, and when you, when you did it in a bulletin, everybody could see it. So, um, it was like, I made an announcement when I got, when me and my husband got engaged and I'm like, we're engaged. And all my friends were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, so they could see it. And if there was any like parties going on or events, like on Facebook, you do the private event Well, on MySpace, it was just in a bulletin. And when you pulled up your homepage on MySpace, there was a little like a little area on there, like a little square that had a list of all the bulletins and you could see what they say. Well, these people were putting bulletins up saying Megan Meyer is a slut. Megan Meyer is fat. And I don't know if there was any others. Well, Tina was floored that Megan did not listen to her. When she got home immediately, she went to Megan, who was on the computer. Their computer was in the basement. And Tina saw her daughter typing vulgarities back. Well, you know what? I, I, I would have done the same thing. And I'm sure many people out there, I mean, when someone's calling you this and saying this about you, you're going to fire back. At least it's very hard. Even now for me, it's very hard to just shut it down in the middle of an argument. I got to get my words in. So I get what she was doing. And she was just, her mom was just in shock. I mean, here Tina's only, I mean, Megan's only 13. And why, you know, when she's talking like this. So Tina told her she was, well, she was so aggravated or, or aggravated at her. And she told her that she said that she was aggravated with her. Megan told her she was supposed to be on her side, that she was her mother. Well, Josh, here was, the, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say the last lines right now that the last lines that, um, Megan saw on her last post, last comments post, Josh says, everybody in O'Fallon knows who you are. Everybody hates you. The world would be better off without you. Megan said back, you're the type of boy a girl would kill herself over. She ran upstairs and upstairs to her bedroom, and, and which was two floors up from the basement. And her father told her, saw her going to her bedroom and told her it would be okay. Those people don't know her on that computer. They don't know her. Well, Megan went to her room and as she was in there, her parents went down to start making dinner and they were discussing what was happening with this MySpace account. And as they were discussing it, Tina had a bad feeling. All of a sudden just had a bad feeling. Um, during the discussion, she ran upstairs to Megan's room. She found her daughter hanging in her closet. The next day, 
was October 17th, 2006, and this is the day that Megan died. Three weeks before she was 14. It was later that day that Ron, her father, logged onto MySpace and found those last two messages. Um, Tina tried to message Josh, but his MySpace was already deleted, of course. Um, six weeks later, a neighbor, I did not get this neighbor's name, called them and asked, called um, Megan's parents and asked them to meet her at a counselor's office. So it was here when Tina and Ron learned that Josh Evans did not exist. Um, there was a neighbor of the Myers who had a daughter who was about Megan's age and was friends with Megan, but they had had a fallen out. This was the neighbor, not the neighbor that called them. This was a different neighbor. Uh, was the one who created Josh Evans. This woman, this grown woman that lived next door to them, created this MySpace page and was messing with this little girl. Um, her daughter even got in on it and sent that last message. Her daughter was the one that sent that last me message that Megan read before she died. This lady, this woman's name is Lori Drew. Her excuse she claimed she started she started this whole thing, this whole MySpace account, to find out how Megan felt about her daughter and others. Why? Who cares? Worry about yourself. You know, a grown woman messing with this little girl. What in the... I, I'm sorry, but... Uh, she didn't know about her daughter's offensive messages to Megan. This is what Lori Drew says. So she said, uh, so she says, that's what I wrote. Sorry. So she says this, uh, that she did not know. And she claimed it was just a joke. Just a joke to say, tell this girl to kill herself. Just give her a loaded gun. It's just a joke. Another neighbor who called them, uh, another neighbor who called them, this was the neighbor that called them and had them meet them at the off at the counselor's office, told them that Lori Drew was laughing about it and wanted to mess with Megan. Now, after the news got out, um, they, they got the news out, this family, and um, wrote about, or um, I think it was her aunt that found a journalist and reached out to him. It was either a journalist or a radio personality reached out to him and told them about Megan's case and what happened. And they wrote about it. And then web bloggers started um, posting about it. And then after these people's names, after the, the Lori Drew and her daughter's names broke in the media, everyone shunned them. Lori and Sarah was the daughter. Her daughter was 15 at this time. Uh, so they were the ones that were being shunned. And Lori owned her own business and had to close it. Aw, oh, isn't that just too bad? She had to close her business. And then the web bloggers published their photos, phone numbers, addresses, and email addresses. So they, they published their home addresses on the web. Lori Drew was indicted and convicted by a jury of violations of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act in 2008. But the conviction was thrown out because the CFAA, that's the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, did not intend to criminalize the conduct of which Lori was accused. An ordinance was passed. Prohibits, this ordinance prohibits harassment that utilizes an electronic medium, you know, computer, iPad, iPhone, uh, all, you know, uh, pagers, you know, all electronic mediums and a punishment of a fine up to $500 and 90 day imprisonment. That was what the ordinance was passed. And this, there is now her parents was able to get this law passed. It's a law called Megan's law. And it's a bill. If I can read my handwriting here. Okay. A bill was, this bill was introduced April 2nd of 2009 and it is to criminalize usage of the internet to harass someone. The existing statute was expanded to prohibit abusive communication by any means. 
So that is called Megan's Law. So this was the statute was expanded to prohibit abusive communication by any means. Um, so that's means any means, I would think. Um, Tina Meyer started the Megan Meyer Foundation in Chesterfield, Missouri. That's where it's headquartered. And it exists to promote awareness, education, and promote positive change to children, parents, and educators in response to the ongoing bullying and cyberbullying in our children's daily environment. So this is wonderful that they did this. You can, like I said at the beginning of this, you can look it up online. And I think that I'm not sure if there's a Facebook page. I was going to look that up and I forgot to look up if there is a Megan Meyer or um, Megan Meyer Foundation Facebook page. But this story, I, I can't get over it. I mean, Lori Drew and her daughter may not have went to prison, jail or anything like that. But the community really, really <laughs> put them through a lot. And I'm telling you, I don't blame them. Good for them because this, this should never be forgotten. This is a grown woman who needed to get her own life. Can't she worry about her own life and her daughter? And I think I saw this was covered on a show on ID, I think. I can't remember the show. But I thought this neighbor from, well, this is, I'm getting from that. I don't know. I didn't read this in anywhere, but that I thought this Lori Drew that when Megan was found and then she died, that this Lori Drew was being all sympathetic to Tina and Ron over their daughter killing herself. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Like I said. But it was done on, I, I saw that on a show when they were reenacting it. She would like, you know, tell her, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope it, you know, and you know what? She probably did do that because she lived right next door to him. So if, she, I mean, my guess is she did do that because if she didn't, I would think that, you know, you know what I mean? Like if she didn't do that, she'd be very cold hearted. She is cold hearted, very cold hearted, but they didn't know that at the time, you know? So she was probably extending her sympathy to her, but I just don't get it for this mother she's and, and, and the daughter to get in on it too it's like what kind of mother are you I'm sorry but I know I'm putting my own opinions in this but this just really got me to where I'm, I'm just so glad that community did not let her forget this and she had to close her business I don't even know where they live now they probably had to change her names so um that's the story of Megan Meyer and that poor girl at the time that she died thought Josh Evans was real thought he was a real boy you know it's sad it really is and I know when you when you are put down so much you just want it all to stop and that's why you just want to end it and for her not to know who was behind this oh that just really gets to me because, you know, she thought he was a real boy being mean to her, and he wasn't. It was the neighbor lady. So, oh my gosh. So anyway, I just wanted to tell the story so much, and then I'm going to tell another one since I, I'm kind of late on episode 71. I'm, there's a couple other cases similar to this that are very sad, and um, the parents are fighting and fighting and got some laws passed and for the schools and um oh it's just amazing what these parents do to get some laws passed like this and they should they should have laws i think um i'm i think it's wonderful though that megan's parents got her changed her school because not many parents would do that it would cost more money or they'd have to take him to school every day probably because it would be in another town. But I am just ha so happy that when I read that they changed her school and this has happened in other cases as well. Um, and sometimes if the school is too close though, they might know kids from the first school and then they might know of, it, it's just bullying is horrible. Bull bullying 
uh, making, and I'm, when I say bullying and also making fun of somebody, teasing them, and you think it's all in good fun, but it isn't. You don't know what that person's been through in their life. You don't know what that person grew up. You know, something could have happened at home when they were, when they were a kid, something could have happened that, to them, you know, at a very, very young age. And you doing this is making it worse on them. You know, get a life, worry about yourself, be kind because, and I know a lot of people say, and, and a lot of, not to get on a whole different subject here, but I know a couple of people that are like this and they say that they're so into God and they pray and they do all this and then they turn around and they bully somebody, make fun of them, talk behind their back, laugh. And these people are older than me. Isn't that something? <laughs> so I just want to let everybody know not you know it's 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 a horrible thing and the law is getting more strict on suicides and people who are pushing someone to kill themselves the law is getting a lot stricter on that and not only that everybody will know who you are just like they know who Lori drew is everybody in the community i mean and um it's not good it's not good so that's episode 71 I just want to wish everybody a wonderful weekend I'm off work this week so I have a lot of time here to do some things right now I have a lot of time I'm hoping that nothing um you know interrupts that <laughs> mm. Just drinking my coffee, enjoying my day. I'm trying to think if I've seen anything lately. I have not. On um, I've been watching, like I said, the Hallmark Christmas movies. And I've been so busy working this week, I haven't really got to watch anything new on Paramount Plus or um, what's the other one? Max. But I was watching Tubi last night because that's free, and um, I. <laughs> I was watching Welcome Back, Cotter, because we were talking about it at work on Thanksgiving, and I'm like, gosh, I haven't seen that show in forever, and I am laughing. Oh my gosh, if anybody remembers that show, it's where John Travolta got his start, and Horshack's laugh, and Vinnie Barbarino, and oh, it's great. It's great. I just love it. It's still funny. It's still funny, but you, you could tell it's aged, you know, but it is so funny. Anyway... <laughs> That's what I've been doing, watching old sitcoms. So that's all for today. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want any more episodes, you can always join Spotify subscription or Patreon. They're both $5 a month. And there is now, I've, I've been doing three episodes, bonus episodes a month since August. So there is probably, or was it, no, September. So there's eight bonus episodes. I'm getting ready to put my ninth one on there at the end of this month because I've been hitting three bonus episodes. I started thinking I can only do two, but I had so much time to do these that I started doing three. So um, I'm hoping to get my third one here in at the end of this month. So thank you, everybody. Thanks again and have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next time.